So by now, I've made a few videos on improving your home acoustics. Specifically, home studios in domestic-sized rooms. But you might be wondering, who is this hex spa guy and why should I listen to him? Well, you shouldn't. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> well, in this video, I'm going to show you a before and after of my current room. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that I made an improvement. But what matters, of course, is that my advice can help you improve your space. This video is the first in a series called Acoustic Analysis for Drunks. You can be sober while watching it. I just wanted to manage expectations. But if you can see that my room is now better than it was before, then stay tuned because your room is next. Hexpa. Hey, I'm Michael Carrillo, AKA Hexpa. Welcome to my channel. I made a PDF for this video series called Acoustic Analysis for Drunks, and you can download it by clicking the link in the description. Let's get right into it. This first image is my room's response before any treatment, typical of most rooms. The upper left is the unsmoothed bass response, where we're up 10 decibels at 140 hertz and down 22 decibels at 150 hertz. In the upper right, we have the third octave smoothed full SPL. Not bad, but we're up 10 decibels at 750 hertz. Bottom left has a waterfall graph. Note the high Q lingering resonances. Bottom right is a decay plot, my preferred way of viewing decay. Red is the original SPL, and blue indicates 150 milliseconds. Many peaks have 10 decibels of decay or less. These are the four graphs you need to master if you want good acoustics. Take some time to understand them if you don't. Now let's view the responses after I finished treating the space. Everything looks worse, right? Actually, it's better. It's just that the y-axis on the SPL graphs are different, which brings up a good point. We all notice SPL, but never think about decay. You wouldn't send your mix through minus 10 decibels RMS of reverb, right? That's what your room is doing to your speakers. Here you can see that the waterfall is far more flat and there's a lot less blue on the decay plot. Now let me match the y-axis so we can compare directly. This is a direct comparison between the before and after unsmoothed bass SPL response. It's clear that the Q of the peaks are lower and the nulls are more shallow. Furthermore, instead of being up 10 decibels and down 22 decibels, we're only up five and a half decibels and down seven dB. We've also raised the sub bass region from 30 to 60 hertz by about 15 decibels, not that I care because I only focus above 63 hertz, but we'll go into that. Make sure to never smooth your bass SPL graph. You need to see the detail when analyzing and treating your room. Next image will be the third octave smooth full SPL response. Again, this might look worse, but I don't think so. Instead of plus 10 dB at 750 hertz, we're only up five and a half dB at 800 hertz, and the Q is lower. We're down five and a half dB at 2,250 hertz, but I think if you were to average out the response, we'd still be more flat than before. Again, note the bass extension. I applied about minus 8.8 .8 dB of EQ at 67 hertz, but that's about it. You smooth the full SPL, otherwise you're gonna see comb filtering from reflections and differing stereo arrival times. We'll deal with that separately. From here, we move on to decay, which is arguably more important than SPL. Here I've matched 20 dB from the highest peak and the lower y-axis limit. Waterfalls are great because anyone can intuitively see which is better. Where before is lumpy, long, and high Q, after is more even, save for the ringing at 43 hertz, which is actually not a problem. It's down 16 decibels, not far from our target of minus 20 dB within 150 milliseconds. The EBU recommendation emphasizes the response above 63 hertz, so don't get bent out of shape about treating 8 hertz. If anyone tells you that you need resonant absorption to treat below 125 hertz, here's your proof that that's false. The last comparison will be with the decay plot, which is my favorite. Hopefully it's clear that the after is better than the before. I aim for 20 decibels of decay within 150 milliseconds and an even taper, and mostly I get it. Some people get a prettier response, and I'll show that in other videos. It's also in the acoustic analysis for Drunk's worksheet, so be sure to download that. Link in the description. I created a recording zone, so some treatment wasn't allotted for the best listening position response possible. Besides, 100 hertz is no problem to treat with some 4-inch panels, and I'm already getting 20 decibels of decay, so it's mostly glamour at this point. Clearly, the ringing is lower Q, which is good. Okay, let's wrap up. 
While I did achieve my targets of plus or minus 10 decibels of SPL and 20 decibels of decay within 150 milliseconds, you can see that my room response isn't perfect. I'm in a regular apartment building, nothing special. The point is that many of us are working from home and even in imperfect, small, domestic sized spaces, big improvements are possible. What follows in this video series is a walkthrough of the Acoustic Analysis for Drunks worksheet. The worksheet is a step-by-step -step guide walking you through the process from room selection, through understanding the individual acoustic measurements, all the way to ideas for how to place the treatment and going through an iterative improvement process. The end result is that your room will be much better and you'll understand why. If you take time to understand this information, you'll definitely be able to squeeze out all the potential from your treatment efforts. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the worksheet video. Peace.